Over the course of human history, man has sought answers to the most challenging of questions. Why is the sky blue? Who built the pyramids? Why do they call them grape nuts when they contain neither grapes nor nuts? Who cares? What we really want to know is, what's the best Marvel Legends Spider-Man figure? Hey y'all, welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures. We've taken the 64 best Marvel Legends Spider-Man action figures, grouped them into nine distinct categories, and placed them in a single elimination, winner takes all tournament bracket. And here's the best part. I have no idea who's going to win. That's right. I'm going through this figure by figure, and whoever comes out on top is the champion. So let's get started with the classics. First up is the Retro Carded Spidey from 2020 versus 2013 Superior Spider-Man from the Ultimate Green Goblin Build-A-Figure Wave. Superior Spider-Man should not have worked as a story. It should have been just a terrible Freaky Friday analog with Peter Parker and Doc Ock switching spaces, but it wasn't. It was an absolutely brilliant storyline that was so well done, and this figure really captures it with the asymmetrical web lines across the entire pattern and this great like Ryan Stegman design suit, and it really is captured in this figure. But realistically... You're going up against the retro-carded Spider-Man. You don't really stand a chance. Winner goes to retro-card. Next is a battle of 2022 figures with the Renew Your Vow Spidey facing off against the one from the Amazing Friends 3-pack. Two of the newest entries squaring off. The Amazing Friends Spider-Man is really just a repaint of the Amazing Fantasy one. It's on the smaller body, so it has a little bit more of that Ditko flair. And of course, it's got those classic Ditko eyes and a little bit of a lighter scheme to the blue. Whereas the Renew Your Vows is a whole new sculpt with great articulation. He's got the pull-down hips. He's got all the joints that you could possibly want, a bunch of ab crunch, and that classic 90s styling. But there's something about it I don't like. I, I feel like that the proportions are maybe just a little bit off. He's a little too bulky. The blue may be too dark. And I don't love how huge that spider symbol is. So moving on to the next round is going to be the Amazing Friends. It's a battle of Toy Biz figures as the original Spider-Man Classics figure from 2001 takes on the Snapshot Spidey from Series 10 in 2004. Never really understood the appeal of the Snapshot Spider-Man, which many people at the time were claiming was the best Spider-Man figure ever made. Yeah, it's got a really great and maybe the best John Romita head sculpt, but look at these joints. I mean, this is the craziest looking thing I've ever seen and, and just doesn't make any sense unless he's in really specific crouching poses. Meanwhile, the very first Spidey Classics is exactly that, just a classic, and it's the modern progenitor of the entire Marvel Legends line. It's the clear winner here. Modern figures collide as the Mark IV armor, which came in a Toys R Us exclusive 2-pack in 2017, fights the 2015 Hobgoblin Build-A-Figure Spider-Man, better known as Pizza Spidey. This won't be the last time that we see identical sculpts face off against each other. First up, we have the Spidey Mark IV armor, which was designed by Alex Ross, and he did the covers for all of those issues, and this is pretty spot on. He had kind of a glowing, kind of airbrushed look to the spider symbol to connote some of the electricity, and that carried through with the eyes, and I think that the paint application really kind of brings that out, and this is a good-looking classic Spider-Man figure. But come on, the pizza Spidey? is absolutely one of the greatest Spideys we've ever seen. Long and lean. This just looks like the 90s come alive. Total victory, Pizza Spidey. All right, it's time for round two. Oh my gosh, I'm already having to make ridiculously difficult decisions. You know, the, the retro Spidey was the figure that I used when I went through and did the entire history of Spider-Man comics and action figures. This one stood in for most of those cover and art pre reproductions because it really does capture so much of the eras all the way from Ditko through Ramita, through Gil Kane. You know, it's muscular but still thin. You know, it's got a great head sculpt that I think does kind of cross over eras. He's a little bit bigger, 
does have the pins in the joints, so you can kind of see those red marks. Whereas this newer one, pinless body, a little bit smaller, so he scales a little tinier with all of your other Marvel Legends, which I think really kind of fits Spidey. He still has all of the same articulation for the most part, can get into all those great kind of crunchy, crouchy Spidey poses. I, I didn't anticipate this, but I'm going with The Amazing Friends as the one to advance. I loved the Todd McFarlane era on Spider-Man. It's what got me back into reading the title after some time away. And there's something about just this lean, athletic, small-framed Spider-Man that I absolutely love. And I just think that that half-unmasked head sculpt is so great. But this figure completely captures all of that McFarlane goodness. It has a really, really McFarlane head sculpt from his early days on the title and it's the thing that brought all the articulation to the fore and really made action figures action figures but as good as it is I, I still gotta move forward with the pizza Spidey next up let's take a trip through the Spider-Verse and see who survives first up is 2016 Spider UK from the Sandman Build-A-Figure Wave versus Spider-Man Noir from the Lizard Build-A-Figure Wave of 2018 we did get a newer version of Spider-Man Noir in the Across the Spider-Verse line, but this is actually the original one, and it has the, the dreaded Nick Fury trench coat. But I like the fact that it came with a gun and a holster, and I actually add him, added a custom 3D printed hat to make it look a little bit more like what I remember from the comics, but it's actually a really nice version of this black-suited Spider-Man Noir. But there's definitely something that I just really love about the Union Jack incorporated into Spider-Man's suit with this Spider-UK figure. Plus, he's on a little bit of a bigger buck body. He's a little stronger, and this one's going to be the winner of this round. The 60th anniversary Japanese Spider-Man figure came out in 2022, while the Mangaverse Spidey premiered all the way back in Wave 5 of the Classics line in 2004. The Spider-Man representing the Japanese TV show is such a delight. It has, like folded in cloth costume it has his special bracelet where he can call leopard on it has his his shoes with the soles exposed it's just all the little details that make this figure such a delight and while it is incredibly impressive that they actually made a mangaverse spider-man the completely nonsensical and non-functional articulation is going to prevent this bad boy from moving on we got to go with japanese spider-man the battle continues with 2018 Spider-Punk from the Lizard Wave against 2019's House of M Spider-Man from the SPDR Build-A-Figure line. It's interesting how the chest decals of these two figures are pretty similar. You can see the design of the spider kind of coming bleeding down from the chest on both sides of the House of M Spider-Man. Of course, House of M was more of a Marvel mutant story, but in it, Spider-Man got everything he ever desired. And, of course, it all went totally wrong. However, in the Spider-Verse, we get this great Spider-Punk figure with so many little details, like converting the Thwippy hands into Devil Horn's hands and the pick in his other hands. There is no doubt the winner of this round is Spider-Punk. Titans Clash, when the 2018 GameStop exclusive PS4 Spider-Man faces off with Spider-Ham from the Monster Venom wave of 2018. I'm not much of a gamer, but I can certainly appreciate the cool look of this PS4 Spider-Man. I've never really thought about white as being an accent color for Spidey, but it really comes off, and I'm sure it really looked great on the video game screen. But what I am is a child of the 80s, and I remember picking up those first issues of Spider-Man. Peter Porker, the spectacular Spider-Ham. And even though this figure has some clear limitations, it's going to be the one that's moving on to the next round. The first cuts are made. Who's going to get past round two? So it's the United Kingdom versus Japan, and that has absolutely no bearing on which figure I'm going to choose. I do really like Spider-UK. The Union Jack is just such a, a cool-looking flag, and to incorporate it so seamlessly into the Spidey suit is really awesome. But this figure just hits all the marks with just the little teeny touches that bring out the gonzo creativity of the Japanese Spider-Man show. It's the one moving to the next round. 
Oh, man. I am super, super sentimental when it comes to Peter Porker. But this figure has some real limitations. I mean, there's no articulation below the waist. And even the articulation up top is pretty limited. When you compare that to the detailing of Spider-Punk with his Chuck Taylor high tops, and look here on the back with this logo that's representative of the CBGB's punk rock iconic venue in New York City. Instead, it's the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man logo. There is just no doubt that we got to keep rocking with the Spider-Punk. The next section of the bracket is a double dip of goodness with the Ditko-inspired figures and those from Spider-Man 2099. The Ditko side begins with the 2022 60th anniversary Amazing Fantasy 15 versus the 2001 Spidey Classics version. Spidey Classics Amazing Fantasy 15 was just the original Spidey Classics repainted with a darker color black and a new head sculpt to represent that Jack Kirby cover that Steve Ditko inked for Amazing Fantasy 15. I added some uh, little web wings underneath, which is fairly ironic, seeing as how I took them off of the 60th anniversary Amazing Fantasy 15, which in every way is a clearly superior figure. I do love that that spider emblem on the chest, which is just so Ditko. This is this is the clear winner of this round. The other half of the Ditko bracket has the retro-carded Peter Parker from 2020 versus the Toy Biz Marvel Legends Amazing Fantasy 15 from 2005's epic Sentinel Build-A-Figure wave. Toy Biz tried again in their Marvel Legends line with another kind of Kirby Ditko head sculpt, but a completely new body. He does have that great classic spider emblem, and the spider on the back is much closer to what we saw in the first appearance with the black and the red. This one also came with an attempted web wing, but boy, it really looked bad. But then I included the Peter Parker because it has that classic Ditko split face, and I've got the spider sense tingle from can of beams effect going on this is a nice figure but all of the effort that went into this one lets it move on to the next round familiar faces square off with the spidey 2099 from the 2015 hobgoblin wave versus the retro carded one from 2021 now i'll admit it these two are super super close they're the same sculpt but the retro card has a slightly smaller skull emblem on the chest, and a little bit of a flatter paint job compared to the original, which has a much larger skull and a shinier metallic paint job. And it's that paint that allows this one to move on to the next round. It's old versus new in this round, as the 2001 KB Toys exclusive 2099 battles against Miguel's new white suit from the 2016 Sandman series. Toy Biz got everything they could out of that Spider-Man Classics body, and I'm totally fine with that, but here is maybe the fourth version of it that we've already seen on this list. But what separates this one? Soft goods. They managed to get that, that web wing on the back with soft goods. And it's pretty cool, and as an exclusive, it was a great figure to get. And truly, I'm not a big fan of this costume because it was really only short-lived, but wow, this is a spectacular figure. The, the metallic red really stands out and just gives this a totally unique look for Spider-Man 2099. Let's see who out of this bracket is going to the Sweet 16. Toy Biz, I love you. I love your dedication to new sculpts. I love your dedication to articulation with these articulated fingers and toes and everything. I love the attention to detail on the back but this is one of the best Spidey figures we've ever had, and it's the one that's going to escape from this round. All right, we got two figures that are both made of plastic, but are both really showing out with the deco with their metallic paint apps. This one's great. It's actually a really unique look for this figure. I like the way that the Spider logo is kind of both positive and negative with the way that it's designed, but come on. This is the Spider-Man 2099 you know you want, and this is the one that's advancing out of this bracket. Time for the ladies as we look at the best figures of the Spider-Women. Personalities clash as the Mary Jane from 2017's Toys R Us exclusive 2-pack takes on Ashley Barton from 2018's Monster Venom Wave. Boy, talk about your polar opposite characters. 
While MJ was portrayed as kind of more of the wild child, she eventually settled down and really kind of grew into that girl next door role, complete with freckles all the way across her cheeks. Just a gorgeous civilian figure, which we need more of. Compared to Ashley Barton, the alternate future daughter of Spider-Man in the Old Man Logan universe, who in that book actually went by the moniker of Spider-Bee. And since this is a family program, I am not going to include that, nor is she moving on to the next round. We gotta go with MJ. It's a battle for the name Spider-Woman, as 2018's Jessica Drew from the Thanos Wave faces Julia Carpenter's 2019 Molten Man Wave figure. When I set this bracket up, I knew there was going to be some tough choices in the later rounds, but I didn't anticipate this much trouble in a first round matchup. Jessica Drew is the original Spider-Woman, and I love the way this costume just absolutely pops, the way the yellow and black bounce off against the red. It's not just a simple mimicry of Spider-Man's costume. It's its own unique thing, and they really executed the web wings better here than they have with any other costume. But as I look at these figures, I don't know, man. There's just something so awesome about Julia Carpenter's black suit. The way the, the white is on the arms and the legs and that head sculpt and hair, those highlights, I would never have guessed. But J Julia Carpenter, Spider-Woman, is going to beat out Jessica Drew in the first round. Next, Silk from 2016 Space Venom Wave takes on the challenge of Spider-Girl from the 2015 Hobgoblin Build-A-Figure set. This is the first Silk figure that they produced, and it's really good. I mean, it looks exactly like the comic counterpart. I like the fact that it's got a little bit of a darker skin tone, and that S logo in the middle of the spider web is, is pretty nice. But I don't have any kind of emotional attachment to this character. As opposed to Mayday Parker, the daughter of the original Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson, and the one and only Spider-Girl. Spider-Girl holds the record for the longest tenured title in the Marvel Universe starring a female character, and for that reason alone, she's moving on to the next round. Completing the first round of this bracket are Anna Corazon from 2013's Ultimate Green Goblin Wave against Gwen Stacy, who appeared on a retro card in 2020. You know, I like this kind of Spider-Girl character. She definitely has that Julia Carpenter vibe with the black and white, but I really honestly know absolutely nothing about her as opposed to Gwen Stacy. You know, the only problem with this figure is you got to be really careful with the neck articulation. But as long as you are, she makes it to the next round. All right, ladies, only two can advance from here. Who's it going to be? These are getting pretty tough. I mean, uh, Julie Carpenter here has kind of moved on in her role in the Marvel Universe, and now she serves as Madam Web in the 616 universe, so she has a completely different costume and has left this one behind. While Mary Jane is obviously one of the central characters in all of Spider-Man's tales, and you know, this is just such a great addition to your collection. But I still got to go with the better action figure. And it's this one. She's moving on. Ah, these are two characters that I just truly love. I've kind of always been a Gwen guy. I've, I've preferred Gwen over MJ. And, and this just has her 60s, you know, go-go boots. She's got the headband. She's got that, you know, just really smart but pretty face. It's such a, such a good version of Gwen Stacy, but how can I get rid of the Mayday Parker figure with that Ben Riley inspired costume, the wrist gauntlet web shooters, the nicely done web patterns? Yeah, there was never a chance. Spider-Girl was always going to win. It's time for Spider-Clones, and poor Ben Riley can't catch a break even here. First, the Ben Riley Spidey figure from 2016's Absorbent Man Wave takes on his brother and successor to the Scarlet Spider title, Kane, from the SPDR Wave of 2019. Yet another example of the same body sculpt producing two different features. We start with a clone version of Scarlet Spider known as Kane, and it's kind of cool. He's got these kind of web bone things coming out there. But this is really what Ben Riley should look like. I love that Mark Bagley designed costume. I love the wrist gauntlets. This one is the clear winner. Hasbro's Walmart exclusive Ben from 2008's Ares Wave battles the upcoming evil Ben known as Chasm. Hasbro's initial Marvel Legends offerings were really terrible. I mean, 
This figure has like carved in sculpted web lines on the head, but then painted web lines everywhere else. It has that terrible square knee articulation, but even that is better than what we're seeing with this Chasm figure, which really took a character that I loved and made it into something awful. I gotta go with the Hasbro figure. More old versus new, as the 2015 Rhino Wave Scarlet Spider stands against the upcoming release of Ben Riley in his new suit from the Beyond storyline. Now this one's a little bit closer because I really do like what they did with Art Adams' redesign of Ben Riley Spider-Man for Beyond, but this is just the most classic version of Scarlet Spider that we've ever gotten. I really like how, even though it's plastic, they made the hoodie look like it has, you know, organic, cottony material. Th this is a good figure. They've got the added little bracelets down at the ankles. This one is the one that we're going to see move forward. And if you were doubting that clones are second-class citizens, check out this fight between 2001 KB Toys exclusive Scarlet Spider and... Whatever this is from 2004's Wave 8 of Spider-Man Classics. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, that just... That's just so sad. Look how they mess with my boy. Even without that, the soft goods on the Scarlet Spider are going to let it advance to the next round. Pretty easy decisions thus far. Let's see if it gets any tougher in round two. Once again, I gotta applaud Toy Biz for getting as much mileage as they could out of that original Spider-Man classic sculpt. And this one does have lots of little accessories, and the soft goods really do make it look pretty awesome. But it still just doesn't hold a candle to the definitive version of Ben Riley as Spider-Man. This is just such a great figure. It's the perfect body for this character, and really clean detail on that Bagley-inspired design is about the easiest second round matchup we're going to have. I mean, I appreciate that they tried and I appreciate when they brought the the line back that they they came out with Ben Riley Spider-Man. But come on. This is what the Scarlet Spider looks like. This is the one that we've got to see advancing in our tournament. But what about all those one-off oddball versions of Spider-Man? Well, we're going to determine the very best in this next bracket. The Target-exclusive Bombastic Bagman from 2022 starts this round against the Six-Armed Spidey from 2019's Kingpin Build-A-Figure Wave. If you're a follower of the channel, you know how much I love the Bombastic Bagman from issue 258 of Amazing Spider-Man. It's one of my all-time favorite single issues, and I think it really is one of the key linchpins in Spider-Man history. Now... This six-arm Spider-Man, I mean, we've seen Hasbro do six arms well, but man, this isn't it. This looks like this should be in their kids' toy line. This is really one of the worst figures that they've produced over the past several years. Obvious winner goes to my main man, Bagman. This Mark I spider armor came from the 14th wave of Spider-Man classics way back in 2005. He goes against the retro card Webman which was released in 2021. Doofus's reign in this showdown between two of the dumbest Spider-Man characters of all time, starting with Webman. You know, he was a clone of Spider-Man made by Doctor Doom, who was like this stupid, bizarro Spider-Man. He was like totally unintelligent, and oh, it just was great. It was in a Spidey Super Stories, and the, the colors really do stand out on this on this figure. But how about the very first web armor Spider-Man? And yes, I know that we got a newer one in the retro line, but there's something about this old Toy Biz figure that I really like, whether it's like the silly articulation or the giant play feature. There's just something about the way that the armor is sculpted where he's kind of bending over. I, I don't know. In a battle of ding -a -lings, I think I'm picking this one. Can you imagine a thumb war between the 60th Anniversary Series 2022 Iron Spider and the 2019 Doppelganger figure from the Molten Man wave? There's just arms everywhere. See, I told you Hasbro could do a better job with a six-armed figure like they did with this Doppelganger. It looks a lot better even though it's a very similar sculpt to the six-armed Spider-Man. 
And while I'm not really a fan of the storyline that Iron Spider came out of, this is when Pete was kind of under the influence of Tony Stark right before the superhero uh, Civil War and he revealed his identity to the public. I didn't really like any of that. I gotta admit, this is a pretty strong action figure, so it has to move forward to the next round. Finally, the Captain Universe Spider-Man from the 2017 Vulture Build-A-Wings wave takes on Man-Spider from that very first series of Spider-Man classics all the way back in 2001. Y'all know that I give extra credit to any Steve Ditko creation, and Captain Universe certainly falls into that category. I love these Ditko dots and this metallic paint. They did such a good job with this. And of course, it goes back to that 90s storyline where Spidey had the powers of Captain Universe and was the most powerful being in, in the entire cosmos. But all that being said, you gotta be kidding me with this absolute masterpiece of Man Spider. This one is going all the way. There are some great figures in this bracket getting cut. Let's see who's next. A couple of one-off characters do battle, where this Mark I spider armor only appeared in Web of Spider-Man issue 100. And yeah, it's got a lot of limitations of some of those early Toy Biz figures, and it was really kind of designed mostly to have this play feature. But it still really accurately captures what we saw in that book. But it's facing off against one of the absolute most important moments in Spidey history. That moment where Peter goes to the uh, Baxter building and Reed Richards discovers that the symbiote is alive and takes it off of him using a sonic blast. And so Johnny just gives him an old FF costume and a paper bag to go home in. But the thing that sends this to the next round is the kick me sign alone. Nothing better than a superhero prank to keep you moving. Once again, it's a battle of contorted limbs as the Iron Spider figure in all of its metallic glory comes up against the Man Spider. Man Spider really only appeared in one issue and it was drawn by the incomparable Michael Golden. And this figure just brings all of that horror to life, particularly with this half Peter, half Spider head sculpt. There is no doubt in my mind that this is the figure that needs to move forward. Over the years, numerous artists have left their mark on the web spinner, and we have been lucky enough to see many of these shaped into plastic. Let's see what figures emerge from Artist's Alley. Let's see what the Mark III armor from 2019's Demogoblin Wave has for the 2004 McFarlane Spidey. Artist Stefano Caselli worked with writer Dan Slott on the Spider-Man title during the 2000s, and he created this Mark III Spider-Man armor. And I have to say, this is probably one of the most accurate artist representations that we're going to see in this bracket. I mean, it really does capture that armored look. It has nice detail, good articulation. It's a really solid figure. But come on, man. It's going up against the McFarlane Spider-Man. I mean, this thing is absolutely one of the most priceless figures in my collection. It completely captures that lithe, muscular McFarlane look. Obviously, Todd's version is going on to round two. Titans collide when Eric Larson's Cyborg Spidey, which was a 2020 Target exclusive, battles Umberto Ramos's Vision of the Web Spinner from Spider-Man Classics in 2003. After Todd McFarlane left the adjectiveless Spider-Man title, Eric Larson took over, and he did a great job. There are a lot of people who actually consider Larson to be a better Spidey artist than McFarlane. And part of that storyline involves Spidey getting these cybernetic enhancements. And this figure absolutely captures that perfectly. I mean, down to the little details on his bicep, the look of that cybernetic eye, that huge Eric Larson eye. This is a really perfect representation of that. But it just doesn't have the style of this Umberto Ramos figure. Ramos has such a dis distinctive look for his version of the web head, that square head, those big, huge, dark black circles, those giant puffy fingers and huge feet. I got to give Toy Biz props for really coming through on an artist-specific version. Toy Biz in the early 2000s was a place where they would sneak collector figures into kids' lines, such as these versions of Alex Ross's and Care Andrews' Spider-Man, both from 2004. Artist Care Andrews had a really brief 
but pretty impressive run on Spider-Man. And he drew a long, lean, you know, sinewy Spider-Man figure. This one was pretty cool because it actually came with plug-ins so that his eyes would light up. But I went ahead and painted them white to give it a more comic-accurate look. It's a pretty sweet-looking figure. But Alex Ross is an absolute legend in the comic industry, and his painted book, Marvels, really set a new standard. You can see how it has that photorealistic look with the, the pleats and the curves in his costume. It has that Alex Ross design spider, and he was very, very influenced by John Romita Sr., and you can see that in this head sculpt. Plus, this spider on the back is only drawn by Alex Ross. And again, you've got those wrinkles and creases all through the costume. Based on representation of the art, I gotta go with the Alex Ross Spidey. Ramos makes another appearance in this bracket with this Spider Strength figure from 2003, and it takes on the J. Scott Campbell version from 2006. Umberto Ramos was such a force on Spider-Man, he actually got two figures dedicated to his art style, this one being a fairly simple repaint of the Spider-Man Classics body. But look, kids, with cell shading, an early version of cell shading, really what stands out on this figure is this head sculpt that has the, the asymmetrical eyes that Ramos would do to get some serious expression out of Spidey's face. Plus, magnets. Everybody loves magnets. But then you've got this J. Scott Campbell version. Oh, this figure is so good. Its proportions are so just unrealistic. Look at the size of those hands and of those feet, but that's exactly how Campbell drew it. Plus, it has the upside down spider emblem, which was absolutely signifying Campbell's early run doing covers on Amazing Spider-Man. This is the one that moves on to round two. Uh, time for me to get my heart broken. Let's do this. Boy, things get really, really hard from here. There was a long time, like a period of years, where if you ask me what was the bar none best Spider-Man figure, I would have to lean into this Todd McFarlane with its incredible articulation, its advanced butterfly joints, its articulated fingers. Look at the amount of crouch that you can get out of this one. I mean, this is a Spider-Man figure. But then when I look at the Ramos, I just love the style of this one. Those huge muscles, those great big bulbous fingers, that perfect head sculpt. It's a little bit tighter with its paint apps. Oh man, I don't know. I, I, I think I still got to go with the McFarlane. Just the, the articulation alone is the thing that puts it over the edge. So, okay, that's what I'm going with. McFarlane is going to win this round. Alex Ross is a true legend. And this is kind of a little known figure because it was hidden in the Spidey Classics line and it doesn't get a lot of attention. But there was clear care and detail put into getting this just right and making it look different from the other Spidey figures that were on the shelves. But that being said, this thing, with its incredible proportions, its great crouching, even the play feature with the web coming out and coming back to those huge fingers. Just look at how huge these fingers are. This thing representing J. Scott Campbell's incredibly cartoony but alive artwork, this is the one that we got to keep moving with. And we complete our field of 64 Spider-Men by going back in black. 2017 Sandman Wave Black Suit Spidey squares off against the Ultimate version from the 2022 Amazon 5-pack. When I got the Amazon exclusive 5-pack that contained this Ultimate Spider-Man figure, I thought, what an absolutely random addition to a pack that had such total goofballs like the Fly and Razorback. But once you get him out of the pack, you realize... This is actually a pretty good figure. It definitely represents the Ultimate Universe. He's much more purple and metallic, and he's got those huge Mark Bagley eyes, and he's on, like, the really small kid body. So all of that makes sense. It turns out this is a pretty good figure, which is just enough to say that it made this closer than I thought it would because there was absolutely no chance that it was going to defeat this absolutely spectacular Black Suit Spider-Man. Alt costumes collide with 2022's Future Foundation suit from the Anniversary series versus the Symbiote version from issue 800, which was released in the 2019 Kingpin Wave. 
Future Foundation Spidey is pretty cool. You know, anything that ties Spidey to his roots with the Fantastic Four, I think is really good. It's basically just a repaint of the retro body uh, black suit. This is one where having pinned joints really hurts the figure because, unfortunately, because of the way that his costume is, they stand out every way that you possibly could. But it's basically just another repaint. Whereas with this symbiote version of Spidey from issue 800, you get an absolutely new design, you get the symbiote feet, but you get these super cool eyelet pieces that come off from the head slightly, which is exactly how the artwork was done in that particular issue. And because of that attention to detail, this is the one that's moving on to the round two. 20 years separate the Wave 1 Spidey Classics figure from 2001 from the Negative Zone figure released as a Target exclusive in 2020. You guys just don't know what it was like in 2001 to go to stores, pay five or six bucks, and pick up a figure of this kind of quality. I mean, this thing, with all its articulation, with its absolutely tight paint apps, and even with that little bit of wash, you can see kind of the lighter blue coming over the black. It's just an utterly spectacular figure. And of course... You know, the negative suit is really cool. It did appear in the comics. It was part of, like, John Romita and Howard Mackey's run when they were on Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man. So it does have, like, a comic origin. But this thing was and still is a masterpiece. It's moving on. And the final first-round matchup pits Hasbro's first attempt from the 2007 Target Red Hulk wave versus its most recent from 2022's Retro Line. I saw a video recently where they talked about those early Hasbro lines when they first picked up the Marvel Legends license, and they mentioned that there was like one sculptor who was predominantly in charge of the line, and he had a very distinctive style with some funky proportions like these kind of squared off heads and these big chest and of course these oh so strange square knees. And I appreciate the fact that they tried to come back hard with a black suit Spider-Man and and you know that's great and all, but I think what they were trying to do was this, which is the plastic perfection of the black suit personified. This retro card back is exactly what my mind pictures when I think about the black suit. Let's determine our final two entries into the Sweet 16. I love the creativity and the originality of this symbiote Spider-Man that came straight out of an issue of the comics. You know, it was a one-off appearance, but the Hasbro team obviously was working with Marvel Publishing to make it happen. And I think that's great. I think that story-specific figures are really, really awesome. And truthfully, they help my channel because I love telling stories through them. But let's get real, man. Look at this thing. Look at those giant Todd McFarlane eyes. When McFarlane first took over Amazing Spider-Man with issue 298, Spidey was in the black suit, and this is exactly how Todd drew him, and this is the one that I see making it on from here. Oh, wow. This is, this is like having to choose between your children. I actually think that this spider emblem is maybe a little bit more accurate on our classics figure. I love the fact that it's got where the web shooters come out on the top of his hands because that's how they came out with the symbiote costume instead of under his wrist. But this is just what happens when you get 20 years down the road and action figure technology has improved to the point that you can get a figure that has this much sculpting, this much articulation, and this much paint application and put it in a mass market figure. This thing is as good as any import we've ever gotten. And so it is, of course, going on to the next round. Well, we've made it to the Sweet 16 and we've had to cut some serious contenders along the way. Let me know in the comments where you think I've screwed up and who you think should have made it this far. And if you're enjoying this video, give us a like. I'm having fun making this, and if you want to see more tournament-style videos in the future, tell me who you'd like to see in this format. We've gone from this to this, and these are the only ones left standing. Let's make two more rounds of cuts to get to the final four. Man, I really don't know what I'm going to pick. I mean, the uh, Amazing Friends represents the Ditko era. It definitely looks like everything I grew up with. It's a little bit of a smaller Spidey. I love the colors, the red and blue. I like that kind of bright comic blue. It's got all the articulation that you could ever want. 
but then the the pizza spidey is kind of when i i got back into comics it's it's more of that muscular lean kind of look that 90s you know the todd mcfarlane era and then everything that came after that i do really like the blue on this one too it's got a little bit of a gap at the shoulders where the butterfly comes in and maybe the torso is a little bit long oh this is so tough but i i'm gonna go with my gut and i'm gonna stick with the ditko version the kind of 70s 80s 60s version let's go with the amazing friend spider-man I love Mayday Parker. I love everything that she represents. She was like a throwback to the older comics that just would tell good single stories and do it in a way that was like entertaining for everybody. I love her costume, and I really pretty well thought she would be the one that would get through this. But somehow, the more that I've looked at this Julia Carpenter figure, I mean, I think that I had her slotted in as like the five seed in the women's bracket. But somehow, just this cool figure, this is the one that's going to get through. So a couple of Toy Biz figures here from an era of experimentation where, you know, anything goes. Where you would do any kind of crazy, you know, artist-specific type of thing, but still would have play features that would appeal to the kids. Now, I have always loved this McFarlane Spidey, but it has some real weaknesses, particularly the paint wash isn't very consistent across the entire figure. And yeah, these joints are still kind of wonky with those balls on the hips, and it really sort of disrupts the look of it. Because of that, I'm thinking this classic J. Scott Campbell is the one to advance. I just talked about how much I love the repaint of this figure, but here's the OG, the original, the brand new body for the Amazing Fantasy 15. And it does have that great AF-15 spider on the front, which is just so awesome. And I love the, the black against the red. But if there's one knock on this figure, they didn't give him the blue spider with the little bump on the head that Spidey appeared with in Amazing Fantasy 15. That's the only thing that is not perfect about this figure. And when you get to this point in this competition, perfection matters. And that's exactly what we have with this 2099 figure all the way down to the little points on his fingertips, which is just such a great touch. The metallic paint blows me away. I'm going 2099. The Spider-Verse had some of my absolute favorite figures, and this is definitely one of the top figures that I have in my collection. This Japanese Spidey is just so tight. Everything about it is fantastic. The wrist bracelet, the new hands that really capture what the character did on the TV show. And just the fact that this thing exists makes it just so awesome. But it's all the details on Spider-Punk. All the little 80s buttons on his jeans jacket with the ripped sleeves. Those spikes along his head. And of course, the two different hands. Uh, Spider-Punk is going on. He's rocking on to the next round. This breaks my heart because the Bagman is absolutely one of my all-time favorite characters from one of my all-time favorite moments in Spidey's comic history. But I just don't know that anything can compete with the sculpt of this figure. I mean, there's so much detail everywhere you look. The ripped, tattered costume, this incredible head with all the action to it. Man Spider is the one to beat. Clones, 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 and this is for sure the definitive version of Ben Riley in his Spidey costume. I, of all the alternate Spidey costumes, I think Ben Riley's is the best. I just love the way that the spider comes all the way down. I actually like the half stripes on his legs, but this head sculpt is so good, and it just matches the feel of when he premiered in the books. That being said, this is the definitive Scarlet Spider, really nicely done with his hoodie, with the hood back here. He's got all of the accessories from his belt to his ankle bracelets, but it's still not enough. We got to go with the head clone, Ben Riley making his way forward. Oh my gosh. Do I choose McFarlane, who got me back into comics after a long hiatus with this gorgeous, perfect McFarlane head, perfect McFarlane dimensions, 
long tapering fingers or do I go with something that really represents what the black suit really looked like back in the 80s when he came back from Secret Wars with the symbiote costume? I think I'm going with this one. It's it's a better body sculpt. It's a more appropriate spidey frame. He's strong but still muscular and lean. I'm going with 80s black suit on the retro card. Julia Carpenter has really been the surprise of this entire tournament. I mean, I I just really have fallen in love with this figure all again. I think it's something to do with that sassy look on her face. But I'm sorry, Cinderella. The clock has struck 12 and your run is over. We are going forward with Spider-Man. I really didn't anticipate either one of these getting this far, but the more that I look at this 2099 Spidey, the more I just really, really like it. The uh, the web cape on the back is so well done. You know, it's got just a little bit of swoosh to it, but again, it's the fact that this guy just gets into such great poses because of those fingers. That being said, this is such a unique figure of J. Scott Campbell and such a specific moment in the comics when he was drawing that spider symbol upside down. I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go with 2099.99. It's just, it's just so good. This is where it all comes down to the details. And it's hard to find anything more detailed than this man spider, which was sculpted by Toy Biz's sculptor extraordinaire, uh, Phil Ramirez back in the day. I mean, this thing is over 20 years old and it still looks like it's brand new. But then this newer figure of Spider-Punk with all of the thought and effort that went into the details of it is just so strong. Even, even just all the different things on his guitar, there's so much creativity here. And I think we're going to see a lot more of Spider-Punk when it comes time for the new Across the Spider-Verse movie. But that being said, I still have to keep moving Man Spider forward. I have always loved Ben Riley. I actually had my very first letter published in a Marvel comic in support of Ben Riley as Spider-Man. So he will always have an incredibly special place for me. That being said, I just don't know that you can beat how great this black suit is. It is just perfection. And it's the one making it to the final four. It's down to the final four. The best of the best. The creme de la creme. But there can be only one. Semifinal number one pits the Spidey 2099 in all of its metallic glory versus the Amazing Friends Spider-Man. You know, this one doesn't have quite as much bend as the retro card. It doesn't have the bendy toes of the Renew Your Vows. But what it does have is just the right frame for that perfect Spider-Man figure. And because of that, he's making it to the final. Man-Spider has pretty well cruised into the final four based on the strength of its sculpt alone. Yes, it does have ball joints at four of the six arms, but it's only got kind of a V crotch. And of course, because of the way these feet are positioned, it's pretty static. There's just not that many poses that you could get it in. And we're trying to decide what's the best Spider-Man action figure. And because of that, because of the advanced articulation and what we're able to do with this black suit, we're finally going to knock Man Spider out of this tournament and the black suit is moving forward. Whether or not y'all believe me, I truly did not plan this out in advance. In fact, when I seeded the bracket, the retro carded red suit Spider-Man got the number one seed and actually the McFarlane black suit was a higher seed in that bracket than these two figures. But as I've gone through and I've taken them in my hands and I've looked at them and I've fiddled with them, these are the two that have made it all the way to the final. And it's interesting that both of these figures have come out within the past year. And I think that speaks to the strength of the Hasbro line and what they're continuing to do to evolve these action figures. And I love this black suit. I love that it brings back all those great 80s memories and really is the Ron Friends version who is, you know, probably my second favorite Spider-Man artist. But my favorite Spider-Man artist is still and will always be Steve Ditko. And this is, for now, the definitive Steve Ditko Spider-Man. And for my money, this is the best 
Marvel Legends Spider-Man figure ever. Hey, if you think this was fun, check out these other great videos. And as always, for the best in comics history and action figures, subscribe to Carbon Scoring.